ladies, thank you so much for doing this interview. But more importantly, thank you for providing me with such a great film to watch. Uh, so many emotions going through watching this. Uh, Haya, before we begin, I want to ask you, how does it feel getting this film into the 46th Annual Toronto International Film Festival, especially what you filmmakers have gone through in the last year and a half in trying to make great films, accomplishing that, and then getting into one of the biggest film festivals in the world? I mean, it feels like a homecoming. TIFF is our home festival. I've looked up to TIFF for a, de like, oh, a decade since I've been in this industry, and I've always wished to be a part of TIFF. I would chase around the programmers and go to all the screenings every year. And so to, to, to be at the festival, to present a movie that's so personal to us, after a year of a year and a half of challenges, it's uh, it's surreal. I mean, it's it just it just felt very warm and and very we felt very accomplished and it was a celebration. So, you know, it's challenging, but it's more rewarding because we surpassed so many obstacles to get here. Um, and, and we did it with ease and joy. So, yeah. You know, it's kind of funny when you talked about um, obstacles to get over, this really describes your film, obstacles, <laughs> getting over throughout this whole film. For folks who don't know, what is the film called? And uh, please, what is it about? So the film's called Quickening, and uh, it's a portrait of a young Pakistani Canadian woman named Sheila and her struggle to find her identity as she uh, straddles two worlds, her Canadian world and her Pakistani world. And, um, and that's, that's the journey that we take on with the character. Where did the story come from? Well, it's, it's a weird story. There's so much to want to express personally for me and for, you know, young women um, of my community that there was a lot really to tackle at once. But really, it's a reflection on my early 20s, um, that, that, that time where you're trying to define not only who you are, but the added uh, layer of your identity um, and, and where you belong. So, um, and, and then on top of that was just being a woman and how much capacity, we have the capacity to give life, um, but also we have um, the capacity to contain a lot in our bodies, a lot of experiences. So at what point do we release those and how does that come out? Um, and what do we learn from it? Or how do we feel? Really, it's just an emotional journey that, that drew me to this story. And Rouge, first off, I have to say, you have one of the most beautiful names I have ever had the chance to pronounce, and I hope I did that correctly. Yeah. Um, beautiful, beautiful name. Beautiful character. What was it like to play this character who, free-spirited, yes, going through emotional uh, problems growing up, uh, nationalities, cultures clashing, um, just so many different things going on. And you, with this character, has probably gone through every emotion a person can have. And we did this in an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, it was, first of all, it was an honor because Haya trusted me with, um, you know, really showing Sheila's emotions on, um, on screen. But I think it's something, it's not something so extraordinary because a lot of people have been through that. Um, like Haya said about women containing so much in our bodies, uh, you know, it's she's a very strong character, but at the same time, I've personally felt every emotion that she's been through. You know, it's um, it's a story about a girl who doesn't know where she belongs and she's finding where she belongs. And that's, um, I think, what a lot of women of color, um, women from immigrant families, and also just a lot of women go through. So. Um, it was very relatable and it was a very incredible experience for me to show Sheila to everyone. You know, when I see parts like this and actresses like yourself play these parts, I always wonder what is it like when you play that, the, when you have to display that raw emotion and then when you hear cut, how do you pull back from that? Because there are a lot of incidences where literally my heart is breaking for you, but in the back of my head, because I'm watching this, I'm going, but she's an actress. How does she turn it back off and then turn it back on? Because like I said, it's very, very realistic in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of my first uh, really serious roles. I mean, I did a little one in my dad's movie, but this was um, really the one where I had to 
find not only myself but Sheila it was um even after the film was done it was very difficult for me to separate myself from her because it was almost as if someone I fell in love with you know me and Haya would talk about Sheila like she was a real person we'd be like oh what would Sheila do what would how would she react in this um, scenario so I think for me acting is part of the craft you get to show yourself crying um I think in real real life I'm not the sort of person who's very expressive with my emotions but acting kind of helps me um have an excuse you know to really let it all out so that's that's what I channeled what was your favorite part about this character and I would say for me was the fact that even though she was going through all these obstacles, there's one thing that stands out from the beginning and the end. She never gave up. Mm -hmm. It was like you could throw everything at her and she will get cut and bruised and fall. But somewhere along the line, she got up and continued. <laughs> yeah, well, Sheila's a badass. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I heard this really funny thing, and it's like the oldest daughters from immigrant families are the strongest mm -hmm. people out there, and that is 100% real. Mm -hmm. um, you can throw anything at us, and it's just blowing right off. <laughs> so um, it, was, it was really liberating, like I said, playing a character who's so who's so genuine. She was a very genuine person to play. You know, if she felt a certain thing, she would just say it. If she was with her friends, especially if she felt um, her friend was kind of not including her, she just said it right then and there. She's very, um, she's very genuine like that. She's very raw. And it was and, amazing to play her. And I know you mentioned it already before, but I'm going to ask this question again. What does it feel like, even though we are looking at uh, a Pakistani family and that culture, in a lot of ways, you can put that same character in any culture mm -hmm. and that story would be told exactly the same way. So how does it feel being able to represent women, period? I think Haya and I just, uh, <laughs> we just did something that was really close to our hearts. Like it, it honestly feels like I fell in love with the story and Haya wrote an incredible story. So. I feel, I feel great. I knew this was something that wasn't talked about. Um, and just seeing the way our community, the way I had highest trust, the way I had the trust of my parents about everyone on set, um, it really felt like the whole community came together to tell this story. So I, and sorry, I was gonna say, um, one of the other important aspects, of course, is of course, we're talking about one character, the parents, brother and sister, they're very important to mm -hmm. this story too. Um, can you talk about it without giving away too much and how you categorized the parents? Because, you know, even though of course we, we see our parents, we've seen our parents, you know, fight and bicker, but you know, somehow, some way there's always something. Sometimes it's not them that brings that love together to each other, but there is something like in the children, the love is brought there. Yeah, I mean, how do I categorize? The parents are complicated. I think, you know, um, we were just discussing how the eldest daughter is the strongest in, a, in an immigrant family. I think you could say something unique about every role in, in, a, in a family that's immigrated um, from their place of origin. Um, everyone faces different pressures. Everyone has different um, concerns for each other and they express them in different ways. So it's really, you know, it's challenging to, to uproot yourself. Um, and, and But ultimately, I think that strengthens the love, like the, the strong emotions come out because you want to hold on to each other and you want to hold on to where you come from um, while, while allowing yourself to, to get comfortable where you are now. So, so yeah, there's love in the children, there's love in the parents, there's deep concern, there's deep protective instincts. Um, and then there's also ambition, you know, from the perspective of wanting to push, push yourself, um, you know, improve your circumstances and, and, and reach for opportunities that you might not have had before. So all those things are at play under one roof, you know, that's a lot going on. Who played the younger brother? Because he is the perfect younger brother in so many aspects. In fact, watching it, you kind of forget that he's acting because he really... It, does act like what a younger brother at that age would act like. 
he's fantastic. I mean, Owen was just like a, a shining star. We found him in casting. And the first time I did an audition, we were doing everything remotely. So everything was over screens, you know, so you can't get that personal, uh, you know, I'm very, I like to very much give my attention to someone when I'm, when I'm working with them. And Owen was just, uh, he just was full of emotion and so delicate and so loving. And like, he just fell in love with Aruj and Dunya who plays the, the sister. And they were like siblings on set. Like Aruj was the big sister and they just had lots of fun. Like, yeah, that was really a joy to see them on set together. That was so special. They were, yeah. If there was some way you could continue the story, I'd love to see the continuation with him older because I, he's going to be something, that character. Um, we only have a few more minutes, but one thing I do want to ask you, though, is, Haya, what is it like watching yourself on the screen? For a rouge? Oh, watching yourself? No, oh, I mean you, you, because yeah. basically the character is based on you. What is it like to watch yourself? Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, um, it's a cathartic experience for sure. I think, um, you know, I, I, I can, I can, I'm so grateful that we can make, I can make movies, I can tell stories and I can put them on a screen. Not only that, like invite people that are close to me to witness it on screen. Um, so what does it feel like? It feels like a privilege to have access to something like this. I know so many creative people in our community that don't have artistic avenues to express themselves. And um, to me, I, I, I carry their, um, their emotions and their desires with me, I think, without, um, without an explicit exchange. I just carry those feelings with me. And when I put them out on screen, I'm not only seeing myself, I'm, I'm feeling more united with the people that are around me. So it's, it's truly, once it's on screen, it feels like the movie is giving back to me. I'm no longer the author of, of you know, what we made together. It's, it's, uh, it's the screen with light and image and sound, and it's reflecting back to me. And really the, what it does for me is like, give me a very settled feeling, um, you know, that, that something was created and expressed and that there's more now and what's next, you know, what's the next thing that needs to be said uh, and seen and shared. That's how I feel. Absolutely. Thank you both again for this interview. Thank you for a great experience in watching this film. Kind of hope there's going to be a part two and three to this. You never <laughs> know. But uh, like I said, amazing job. Congratulations. Have a great time at the Toronto International Film Festival and looking forward to talking to both of you on your next projects. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy.